Beams are horizontal structural member which carries the slab load and it is supported by the columns. As we know, beams are predominant in flexure. That means bending moment is the major governing factor in beams when compared to shear force. This is the criteria for normal beams. This criteria will change when we consider deep beams. Hey friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Mastery. In this video, we are going to discuss about what is deep beam, what are all the applications of deep beam, what are all the criteria we need to follow as per IS 456-2000 and also we are going to discuss about the reinforcement details of deep beams. So without further delay, let's begin now. First, let's start off with what is deep beam. Deep beam is a structural element that has a large depth to thickness ratio. As you can see here, when compared to its width of the beam, the depth of the beam is more. Deep beams are typically used in situations where there is a need for a beam to carry large load over a shorter span. Deep beams are designed using a different set of principle when compared to normal beams. This is because the behavior of deep beam is significantly influenced by shear force. So the shear forces tend to cause the beam to fail in a diagonal direction. So in deep beams, shear forces are the major factors. When the load is applied on the beam, it tend to fail the beams in this diagonal directions like this. So in deep beams, effective span to depth ratio needs to be less than 2 or 2.5. This is as per IS 456-2000. In class number 29.1, it is given as L by D ratio is less than 2 for simply supported beam and 2.5 for continuous beam. In class number 29.2 and 29.3, liver arm and the reinforcement details for the deep beam has been given that we will discuss later. Let's look into the applications of this deep beam. This can be used in transverse girder. Transverse girders are beam that are used to transfer load from one part of the structure to another part. Deep transfer girders are often used in bridges and buildings to carry heavy load over short span. Next one is foundation beams. Deep foundation beams are used in areas with poor soil conditions. Next one is corbels. Corbels are beams that project from a wall to support a load. Deep corbels are often used in buildings to support balconies and overhangs. The last one is offshore structures. We use deep beams in offshore structures such as oil platforms and drilling rigs. This is because deep beams are very strong and can withstand the horse environmental conditions that are found in offshores. In deep beam, the shear force is high. Due to high shear force in shorter span, it can effectively resist the bending moment and the shear force become the critical factor in the design of deep beam. So we need to design the deep beam in order to withstand the shear forces. And in deep beam, the strain distribution is no longer considered as linear. Next, let's look into the liver arm which is given in class number 29.2 of IS 456-2000. So before looking to this empirical formula which is given in IS code, let's discuss few basic things about liver arm. If you consider a beam, you have the overall depth and you have the effective depth. Here you should understand the difference between overall depth of the beam and the effective depth of the beam. Effective depth can be calculated by using the overall depth. Effective depth is equal to overall depth minus clear cover minus dia by 2. So if you wanted to calculate the overall depth, you can add clear cover plus dia by 2 plus the effective depth so that you will get the overall depth. This two can be calculated vice versa. And next one is neutral axis. Neutral axis is the axis which is measured from the top of the beam to the point where the compressive force and tensile forces are equal. Neutral axis can be denoted as N. Next coming to the point liver arm. Liver arm is the perpendicular distance between the line of action of the couple forming compressive and tensile forces in the beam. So it is the perpendicular distance between the line of action of the compressive force and the line of action of the tensile force. So that is called liver arm. So to calculate 
liver arm we should know this distance liver arm can be denoted as z liver arm is equal to d minus n upon 3 this can be calculated if we mention this point as a and this is o and this is your b so let's take this one as c now we have to find out the distance bc bc is the liver arm so bc is equal to just i am showing you how we can get this d minus n by 3 bc is equal to ab minus ac ab is the effective depth that is d minus n by 3 because here this is your neutral axis so that into this distance you will get n upon 3 so in this way you need to calculate the liver arm for normal beams in case of deep beams calculating the liver arm is little complicated so that is why is 456 has been provided the empirical formula to calculate the liver arm without any difficulties so liver arm is the critical parameter in the design of rcc beam it is important to accurately calculate the liver arm in order to ensure that the beam is safe and will not fail under the application of loads. Liver arm also plays a major important role in calculating the moment of resistance of a beam. The greater will be the river arm, the greater will be the moment of resistance. Liver arm is given for simply supported beam as well as for continuous beam. Liver arm here is denoted as Z. Z is equal to 0.2 into L plus 2D. So here L by D should be greater than 1 and less than 2 so this is the condition we need to follow or else z is equal to 0.6 l when l by d is less than 1 next for continuous beam liver arm is equal to 0.2 into l plus 1.5 d when l by d is greater than 1 and less than 2.5 or else we need to consider the liver arm is equal to 0.5 l when l by d has to be less than 1. Here l is the effective span taken as center to center distance between support or 1.15 times the clear span whichever is smaller and d is the overall depth. As you can see this is the effective span which is the center to center distance between the support and this is overall depth effective span we need to consider center to center between support or 1.15 times the clear span clear span is the span between support so this is the clear span you have to differentiate these two things effective span is the center to center between support whereas the clear span is the clear distance between the supports IS456 has provided the simplified empirical formula to calculate the liver arm for deep beams. So instead of calculating the liver arm manually, we can simply use these formulas to calculate the liver arm for deep beams. So for simply supported beams, we need to follow the condition given in class A and for continuous beam, we need to follow the formula which is given in B. By using these formulas, we can calculate the liver arm and then liver arm can be used in calculating the moment of resistance of a deep beam. Let's end up this video here. In the next part of this video, let's discuss about the positive and negative reinforcement of deep beams. If you want to know more details about liver arm and neutral axis of a beam, Please do comment in the comment box. I will post a separate video for that. So friends, I hope you all like this video. Please do comment in the comment box. If you really like the content, hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.